Hi, this is Dr. Andrea Letamendi. And Brian Ward from the Arkham Sessions. And you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Welcome to Altered Geek Unlimited. I'm your host, Steve Megatron Phillips, and joining me is... Uh, Mike Booth Ninja 81 Powers. TFG on Mike. Yo. Yo. Have we just spent the last 15, 20 minutes talking about what we've been doing <laughs> behind the scenes, and now I don't really feel like <laughs> talking about it all again. <laughs> Um, well, I guess I could go first. Um, as of this recording, as of this airing of the podcast, GCRN has got at least its first official comic book preview coming. <laughs> Very awesome. DC Comics sent me four pages of the Batman Beyond 2.0 Chapter 21, which releases uh, May 24th. 2014 um very awesome of them that they sent me that can't wait to put it up uh let's see i am recording a three-part arc on mwire regular for the thin man movies celebrating the 80th anniversary of that film franchise um pull bag is going strong i'm currently working on the plans for june uh they won't be as big and huge and as many as in may uh thank god which is probably what most people are saying. Um, <laughs> let's see what else. Uh, I'm dealing with uh, crazy, irresponsible, just generations and generations of stupid people when it comes to my neighbors. Um, walk out of my apartment building this, mo- the, the, this evening to walk the dog, and right in the middle of the sidewalk is this little play set knocked on its side. It's like, I don't know, some little, you know, kid's slide thing. It, it's... It's like the the shrunken down version of a slide that you would find at a playground. And it's right in the middle of the damn sidewalk. Are you kidding me? You can't just set it to the side on the grass where no one has to walk in front of it or trip over the damn thing. Um, So I threw that across the lawn. Uh, It just, the, the people that I live around are just. Oh, so, anyway, yeah, yeah, pretty much. They're all a bunch of asshats. Um, uh, let's see they what else. I've been... Yes, yes, they do. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see what else have I been doing. I'm currently working on uh, getting Pixel C Animation wrapped up for the Captain N era and starting the Super Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 era. Uh, I've been playing a lot of classic video games. Um, that's pretty much it. I, um, someone offered me a PS3, so that's going to be pretty cool. Any games? Uh, I think there's, I think it's, what did he say, um, Arkham City. Uh, it was the only one that he listed that I actually think I could play, because I've seen how the God of War games play, and it's just not my kind of game. Um, so, Okay. Originally, well, no, I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious because the arc, I mean, the combat is a little bit different in Arkham, but they're essentially the same type of game. Oh, they are. Okay, well, <laughs> they're both like hack and slash beat 'em ups, except, <laughs> um, except God of War has a static camera, which means you know you wouldn't be responsible for controlling the where the camera looks, whereas in uh, Batman Arkham. you are. I I hope to eventually get in, honestly. The only appeal for me for a PS3 at the time when it was first launched was Metal Gear Solid 4. Because I am a huge Metal Gear Solid fan. And hopefully I can find that somewhere. I liked uh, 4. To be able to play that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I've been up to. What about you, Steve? What's going on with you? Um, well, I mentioned it off air and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I've, I've been promoted. Um, 
Yay. Um, I have my office done. I have the bedroom done. <laughs> um, we've been busting those out. Got the hallway done. Now waiting on carpet and then the internets to get hooked up. Yay, interwebs. Yes, interwebs. And I managed to, two nights ago, when we were putting in our new closet, sliding closet doors uh, in the bedroom, uh, I was trying to get a clip to pop on it, and I was using a screwdriver, and it popped out of the clip and shot through my thumb. Ugh. So I punctured my thumb with a Phillips screwdriver. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Sounds I like you may have been doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's where that meme actually applies. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I got it to pop out right as I shoved it through my thumb. Uh, and then I immediately, of course, cleaned it and then... <laughs> pressed it and <laughs> I, I pressed it in because if you hold pressure on it after you've done it it seals back to its original location uh essentially creating its own scab of its own damaged flesh so right. but i had it taped up it was about like half an inch thick of um because i put a band-aid and then i put like a piece of paper towel and then i taped it in tape oh and then the next day, I, it was half the size, and today I just have a Band-Aid on it because I don't actually need it on there. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't hurt as bad now. It, it, it still stung like a bitch yesterday. This reminds me of a story that my what happened to my uncle when I was a kid. I believe it was when I was a kid. I could be. It might have been earlier than that. Um, I remember we always used to tell this story about my uncle, my Uncle Patrick. Um he was working in my grandfather's garage with, I believe, a circular saw. Um, and he... <laughs> you know where this is going, don't you? <laughs> oh, he, ah, my fingers! He, no, he sliced off his left thumb. So he just has a, a nub for a thumb. Um, yeah. Yay. What about uh, anything else going on with you, Steve? As far as the house and all that stuff? No, nothing else with the house, really. I mean, we've been going around repairing stuff, and then um, I have family fixing things that we don't know how to do. <laughs> um, but, no, for the most part, it's it's coming along. Cool. What about you, Mike? What's going on with you? Uh, well, you know, Steve got a promotion, and I am I went out, and, well, I didn't really go out, but I have an offer out, out for another job that I'm hoping to get here sometime in the next couple of weeks, but I don't want to say too much about that in case I don't get it and I won't look like a huge failure. Um, other than that, uh, I've spent the, well, let's see, I spent Saturday and Monday night watching my programs mm-hmm. uh, to prepare for this podcast. Um, I'm attempting to get back into gaming after not touching any of my consoles, I realized for over a month. Um, and by doing so, I mean that I'm buying more, I bought two games this week and I'm not playing either one of them. (laughs) Uh, um, actually I should say I've bought in three games in the last two. Now I can actually officially say I've bought in three games in the last two weeks and I'm getting ready to buy a fourth one. Uh, and I will have not played any of them. Um, the reason I I say the third one is because I actually, um, jumped on my first Kickstarter, uh, Thing. I don't know what you could even call it. Your, my first Kickstarter project. Mm-hmm. Uh, I jumped on. I jumped on board with that. I was sitting at work um, sometime uh, last week, and Harmonix, the company that made well, they they made Guitar Hero, and then they left Activision and they made Rock Band. Mm-hmm. Um, their two of their first games were Frequency and Amplitude for the PlayStation Two. Um, they were music rhythm games, but they didn't have. They used just uh, the shoulder buttons on the con- on the PlayStation Two controller. Uh, mm-hmm. They weren't like instruments. You were like a little ship flying along the different uh, tracks for like guitar, uh, keyboard, you know, vocals, just like Rock Band or Guitar Hero was. Um, and I remember playing that in college, and I loved 
those games. Uh, but they decided to Harmonix launched a Kickstarter to make a brand new amplitude for the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. And it was like if you pledge 20 bucks, uh, you get um, you know, you get a copy of the game for both platforms. So I was like, well, I'm gonna buy it when it comes out anyways. I might as well just pay for it right now. So I jumped on that almost as soon as I saw it because I I honestly don't think there's a week that goes by where some part of me doesn't think about playing Amplitude. Um, I think I've owned like three copies of the game, but I don't know where any of them are. Uh, but no, I'm so yeah. I jumped on the first Kickstarter thing. I know some people aren't a, aren't big fans of Kickstarter, and normally I'm not. I mean, I do see like a lot of interesting Kickstarters like come and go, and I I follow them and I think, hey, that would be really interesting. And then I kind of look at what it would cost, you know, you look at the different tiers and I'm kind of like, well, what would I want out of this? And then I kind of look and if it's too expensive, I'm just like, I'm sorry, that's, that's the one that I want, but I'm not going to pay that much for it. Um, kind of like case in point, there was a, there's a group of guys that used to work for uh, one up.com. Um, they're working on a video game documentary series. Okay. And they started a Kickstarter for it. And it was like, if you pledged, if you pledged $50, you got a digital copy of the entire series, um, like in HD and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of neat. But, you know, I don't really, I like digital copies, but what if I want to let someone borrow it? You know, I could give them a thumb drive, but it's way easier just to hand them like a Blu-ray disc of said program or whatever. Right. And the like to get the to get a blue they offered a Blu-ray, you know, of the series with the digital copy and all that, you know, with all the bells and whistles, because the way the Kickstarter works is when you go up a tier, you get everything the previous tier had. Um, But it was like a hundred bucks. I was like, I don't want to I don't want to pay a hundred bucks for this. But I also but I want it on Blu-ray. So I guess you're not getting any of my money. <laughs> So, but yeah, this is, this is the first one I was kind of like, Hey, I, you know, I'd pay $20 for it on PlayStation network when it hits that I might as well just pay $20 for it right now. And it, it got funded today while I was out to lunch and it was kind of fun, like following it and seeing if it was going to get funded. Cause they were trying to get $775,000 and, uh, by 8 PM tonight and, or 8 PM tomorrow, sorry, Friday. And they did it, you know, with like 22 hours to spare. So that was it was kind of fun. I don't know if I'd ever do it again unless something extra, extraordinary like this popped up. But that's that's pretty much all I've been up to. Nice. So TV. I think we can take a quick break and then come back with our subject of the night, the TV show season finale. <laughs> The Pull Bag is GCRN's comic book review and discussion-based podcast. Join your hosts, TFG and Mike, and the rest of the GCRN crew as we make our way through the comics we are reading. Inside the Pull Bag, you'll also find back-issue classics, origins episodes of how we get into comics, and our general comic discussions will all be held after dark. You can find The Pull Bag every Wednesday in iTunes and on www.geekcastradio.com. Make your great escape into comics and jump in the Pull Bag today. It's true, Batsy. I know everything. And kind of like the kid who peeks at his Christmas presents, I must admit, it's sadly anticlimactic. It's been five years, and the GeekCast Radio Network would like to give back to you. How, you may ask? Well, first of all, we're coming up with a brand new website to be launched June 1st, 2014. In addition to that, there'll be many new features for interactive abilities. So how do you enter into this magical celebration? Well, GeekCast Radio has a contest where you can win some awesome prizes, ranging from comics, Blu-rays, DVDs, trade paperbacks, and comics, and more. How do you enter? Write in your favorite stories of how the GeekCast Radio Network has affected you in the last five years, and how it's unleashed the geek in you. You can also enter by writing reviews on our shows on iTunes, for more information, visit www.geekcastradio.com and click on the banner. So until next time, unleash the geek in you. 
All right, and we're back. And so, what uh, what show do we want to start out with for uh, the finales? Since we talked a few last week, and some of them not this week because we hadn't watched them, whether it be you or I. <laughs> Why don't we start with... Um... Uh, sorry, tomorrow, people, because uh, you've actually now seen the finale. Yes. So. All right. So, do you want to go first, or do you want me to? Well, I mean, you're. I. I guess you can go first because you. You know, you thought you had seen it, but you didn't see it. So now I'm kind of. I'm kind of wondering if you. You know, liked it because I remember saying on last week's episode that I actually really enjoyed it. And now I was really bummed that it was like over with. So I'm wondering if you still feel that way. I'm actually kind of upset that they canceled it. It was, I mean, I was glad that they got rid of the founder. Uh, I kind of seen that coming a mile away. The, 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 the death of the dad, I didn't really see coming, uh, I still wasn't quite sure what to think about Jedekiah, uh because he's been so wishy-washy the whole season. Um, but uh, I, I liked the twist that they introduced towards the end. Uh, not only with uh, Steven in the show being able to control uh, time and also reverse the device, but also throwing the founder through it. And uh, mm-hmm. destroying the device, making it basically envelop itself, and then uh, saving all the humans, and then you having uh, what Jedekiah pulled off with John basically wiping him out. Yeah, I it set up a whole lot of stuff. It's one of those. It's one of those series finales where. They probably didn't know they were getting canceled until after the episode had shot. So it, like, resolves nothing. (laughs) Um, I mean, yeah, certain storylines come to an end, like you said. Like, the founder is gone, the machine is gone. But, the like, two-thirds of that show remained open. And not only open, like, brand new mysteries to solve. Like, in... I'll say this about this season of TV. A lot of these shows that I watched that were canceled, almost every single one of them, I was not happy that they were canceled. Like usually I can see, you know, you see a show that gets canceled. You're like, Oh good. I don't have to watch that anymore. Oh, oh, that, you know, it was, it was crap. It, it, or it turned to crap and I don't want to watch anymore. But there were a lot this, this year where it's just like, I don't think there was one where I saw it and I was like, Oh, I'm glad that's over with. It was more, it was more like, man, I'm, I'm really angry. This stuff was canceled. Um, and yeah, I mean, more people was, definitely leads the pack there. I know it was such a letdown. I, I was really hoping that that got to continue, but unfortunately it did not. So. It seemed pretty strong though. I mean, it, at least, the later episodes. Yeah, it kind of went through it. It seemed to have go to go through a little bit of an arrow transformation. Uh, but you know, it, they never had the announcement of a renewal. Like I'm wondering if like behind the scenes, there was talk of a renewal. So they just kind of started running with things. And then all of a sudden it was like, Nope, we're not going to renew you. The one show that, they did that CW did renew that I've heard, you know, decent things about that. I'll probably check out this summer is the 100. Um, but I've only seen like screenshots and have a vague idea that it's kind of a television, a televised version of the hunger games. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking forward to catching up with that this summer, but, uh, um, now I, I, you talking about season finales, there were some people that brought up uh, in the comment section about uh, shows that may not have their season, their season finale like right now, like House of Cards or uh, Sherlock. Um, one, I really dug House of Cards. I really like the, the season finale for House of Cards. But can you consider a Netflix show like a season? Like, I don't even know because you can marathon that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know. I, I mean, I've 
I mean, granted, I don't really watch anything on Netflix because I don't care to have it anymore. But, but, you know, film Phil for fun brought up Sherlock, and yeah, I have to admit, I'm I'm totally remembering how I felt about the end of uh, Sherlock season three. I just remember being giddy as a schoolgirl at the end of that. So that was a really good one. Luckily, it's coming back for a fourth season. So yes. Which I still think, unless you have, unless you have, and I can't remember, Steve, you still need to check that series out. The uh, BBC Sherlock. Boy, little mushroom, stick him in the stew. I want some ho hos. <laughs> this part has been edited. Ha ha ha! You'll never know what was actually here. <laughs> so I was talking about the 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 end of the season finale for uh, Sherlock, and I was wondering if you had. I couldn't remember if you said that you had checked it out and didn't like it, or if you had yet to check out the Sherlock series on BBC. I have yet to check it out. Okay. You're missing out, man. <laughs> so. Um, I guess the elephant in the room as far as TV, because we didn't really talk about him last week, is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Arrow. I fell asleep in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I tried to watch it on my on-demand, and I guess I was really tired. It wasn't anything to do with the actual episode, but I fell asleep and never went back and watched it. <laughs> uh, and Arrow, I, I was telling Steve Offair that um, I have watched maybe four, the first four episodes of season two, so I'm not, I wasn't going to watch the season finale without watching the other episodes, obviously, so I, I have yet to see that. Uh, if you guys want to do spoilers, I don't mind, because it's probably going to be I probably won't see it until whenever it hits Netflix. I, don't, I wasn't necessarily thinking of talking spoilers with regards to Arrow. I just wanted to say that I, watching it, you get to the very end of the episode, and there's the the twist, if you will, uh, regarding Ollie. And at first, I kind of, you know, cocked my head to the side, and I was like, huh? Come on. What is this? And... Fortunately, uh, if the listeners may remember, my wife and I have been rewatching season one of Arrow, and that show is actually a lot tighter than I gave it credit for, or than I think it gets credit for, because they the writers left themselves a lot of hooks and a lot of stray threads in season one, laying like groundwork for stuff that is paying off in season two and will probably pay off like beyond uh hmm. like there's there's one throwaway line in season one that when when you watch the episode when i, I remember watching the episode the first time and just being like Whoop, there it goes whatever that means and you get to the end of season two and uh, my wife and i watched the episode that has said line in it and i was like oh the end of season two makes sense now holy cow <laughs> um but like, you know, whether it's just them, you know, trying to leave themselves like enough rope to, I don't know, not hang themselves with, I guess you could say, uh, or, or they're actually doing a really good job planning, um, the series out. That's, I mean, it's, it's actually a lot tighter than I, than most TV shows like I can watch. Like I, I've been trying to think of a TV show that has, that's more, not, I'm not thinking like like I can think of I can think of better TV shows, but I'm trying to think of TV shows that are more uh, like consistent and totally serialized uh, the way that um, Arrow is because, like I said, there's a lot of stuff in season two that calls back to just little things in season one, and it just makes the whole experience that much more more coherent and. And actually, and actually, knowing where the series goes, uh, rewatching season one has been uh, a big enjoyment for me because uh, some of the stuff that's just kind of trivial doesn't really matter as much because you know how good it gets. <laughs> but it's still there are still some things that are just just downright bad. So, but yeah, I I really enjoyed the season finale for Arrow. I'm excited to see where uh, season three goes, and I'm really interested in you know potential crossovers with Flash. Um, I'm hoping we get more of those than what we think we'll get, but 
What do you think, Steve? I think, uh, I well, for one, I really enjoyed the episode, um, which I kind of figured I was going to. Um, but the the other thing with with the show was uh, it, it not only managed to wrap up the whole Slade Wilson uh, death stroke storyline that they had going, um, but it it allowed I don't know some some level of you know because again they're they're you know they locked him up and then he's in of course like a, a special bunker but um, they they left a lot of things open plus you have Waller playing a bigger role I I just I think it was very very well put together I, I it kept me very in, enthusiastic for uh, for more and I'm I. I, isn't that show coming back sooner, though? What Arrow? Yeah. Uh, it's. Didn't I... I thought it just debuts in the fall, like everything else, like October. Maybe it does. I thought I read something where it was coming back sooner, but maybe I misread. Hmm. I have not seen that yet. I just assumed it was coming back in October with all the other CW shows. Hmm. But... So, I guess moving on, what did you think of uh, Agents of Field? That I was real surprised. Surprised I that know. it was good, or surprised that it was a snooze fest? <laughs> surprised. Now wait a good. second! Wait a second here. It's not because of the content of the show I fell asleep watching it. It's because I was tired. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. That no, that did that was not. No, that was not. <laughs> okay, his cat did something. My his cat, cat hit my phone. <laughs> your cat's not supposed to hit your phone. Why are you letting your cat abuse your technology? She came up and just went whack, and smacked my phone. But um, uh, but yeah, I, Shield. I I was um, I, I was kind of surprised that it was actually good. Um, I, I figured with the inclusion of Nick Fury in there, it would be. But uh, and I didn't think that he was going to get as much screen time as he did. Mm. Oh, um, I just. I mean... I don't know what the season finale of Shield like accomplished. Like there was just so like parts of it were like classic movie, you know, Coulson and you felt it felt a little some of it felt very like cinematic, kinda like the silver screen stuff, and then other parts of it were just kinda like I don't I don't even know what other parts of it were like. I, I mean I didn't I didn't hate it. It was just kinda there. It was just like another episode of the show. It was just like how how they all are i feel like the biggest the thing that made it a season finale was the same thing that you could the same reason the premiere was so big is because oh look nick fury and colby smulders show up you know uh well, and I, that, I that was it, it <laughs> I, I think what made it good was the fact that fury was in it and it gave it more of a cinematic feel um but when he wasn't on the screen, it definitely felt like the regular season. Well, I'm just yeah, I'm just saying it is it, and even the events in it, it just felt like it could have been like a a regular episode. It just happened to have cameos from the big screen guys, which to me is just kind of what that whole show is. It's just kind of like okay, we're we're here, we're telling side stories. I mean. The last like three or four episodes have been good, but they're not. They're still not. I don't know, and I feel like such a well, real bad nerd saying this. They're not what I want that series to be. <laughs> well, and I think that they're starting to head that direction now because um, they've made the Thor reference, they've made the Captain America two reference. They're basically hitting a Guardians of the Galaxy reference now at this point. Um, 
So, I mean, it's it's growing. It just it's not hitting that right. And I agree, it's not hitting those levels that I, I kind of expect and would hope that they'd actually do. Um, but uh, I, as far as the finale, was it the strongest finale of the season uh, or of, of other uh, shows this season? No. But was it entertaining? Yes. But like I said, if Fury wasn't on the screen, I didn't really find myself giving all that much of a, a damn. Um, but I, I, I think well, that... The, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say that I, I think that Fury would... I mean, yeah, he's kind of... They're, they're essentially writing him out of the Marvel Universe with this partially. But if S.H.I.E.L.D. is still going to be technically operating and Coulson's in charge of it... Well, I just don't know what the hook was to come back. Like, what was the thing that was like, come back for season two to find out? Like, I don't even... It was the very it was the very last minute. I guess I don't even remember it. That's how uneventful that is. <laughs> well, uh, you have Fury, you know, you have, you know, like you said, classic Coulson sitting there talking to Fury in the episode. Uh, and then he's, you know, having the conversation with Fury about the 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 revival program and he's he's telling him oh it's stupid and blah 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 and Fury's like you done oh because he puts uh, him in he puts him as the head of Shield the director yeah, of Shield and Col- yeah and Fury hands him this little cube and and says here you're you're the the director you figure it out start out slow take your time blah 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 and um uh in in and I, I kind of enjoyed that, and I kind of saw that coming anyway, um, especially with them saying that Sam Jackson's only going to be like a real quick cameo in Avengers 2. He's not really going to be anything. Um, but uh, in, in the Bill Paxton thing, I, I like how they got Deathlock to take care of him and um, where Fury hands that giant bazooka that he shot Loki with to him and says you know how to fire it and he's like yeah (laughs) yeah Um, well here's the thing for me and uh, i guess this could be the the last thing i'll say about agents of shield good or bad when they announced what it was i there is a i don't know if any of the listeners have uh, read this or not there is a prequel comic to avengers um i think it's like five or six issues and it is what shield is doing behind the events of uh, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, uh, Incredible Hulk, Thor, and Captain America. It follows like Coulson and a smaller group of agents as they, you know, they, they take the destroyer and, you know, they find out how to make the gun and they do this, that, and the other thing. I, I really thought that's what the launching point, I thought that's what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to be you know, televised was it was going to take from that comic and televise those moments. And they just have, I don't know why they can't capitalize on that. And the, the, that comic didn't have cameos from the superheroes. Like Iron Man didn't just show up randomly as Iron Man. It was like the, the superheroes all showed up on like television screens and stuff like that in the background, or they were just referenced uh, via name dropping kind of the way, Iron Man or Tony Stark is referenced in, you know, Captain America 2. I just thought that's what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to be because I thought that was a really cool look into the cinematic version of S.H.I.E.L.D. And they just haven't delivered on that. So, like, that's the fanboy in me saying, the comic is much better than the TV show. But that's all I have to say. I'm still going to watch season two. So I want to see what happens, and I like I like uh, was it Patton Oswald? Yeah, I really I, I like. Thought that was funny how they brought him back. Well, I obviously that's Mike's favorite thing to say, which is a life model decoy. <laughs> which he very well could be. So I'm I the reason that I the reasons I'm interested in Agents of Shield are not for the reasons that they want me to be interested in Agents of Shield. <laughs> so. I I enjoyed 
the last episode, I like I said, um, I, I like the quirky add-ons of Coulson's character, where he was more his movie version, um, and then especially how he took care of Paxton at the end, uh, and then uh, of course the the ramifications of taking that serum that revived him. Yeah. When that was, that's one of the things that kind of bummed me out is he was like transforming and I'm sitting there in my, I'm sitting there going, what's he going to be? What's he going to be? And for like a second, I was like, it's like, they're not going to have him like become like Ultron, like right here on the screen. I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm like, that's not, that's not what this is going to be. Is it? Cause that would be like a really gutsy move. And then Coulson just comes in and pops him. I was like, yeah, I thought that was funny. Uh, I, yeah, it was funny, but I'm just like, that's not. Mm. I mean, that's not the kind of funny I like. I like watching Coulson like geek out about stuff, like he was geeking out over the Howling Commandos gear. Yeah, that was that was really good. That was probably my one of my favorite scenes in the entire season was him geeking out over the Howling Commandos stuff. But. I've heard the only thing I'll say about Agents of Shield is I've heard people say recently, watch the very first episode and then skip to Tahiti and watch the end of the season. Mm, I mean, yeah, but well, I guess it doesn't really matter because the characters don't really matter. <laughs> exactly. True. But then again, if the characters don't matter, why are you watching the show? True. Because Colson <laughs> matters. Uh, what's next? Uh, um, hmm. I caught the season finale to the following, but I don't know if anyone watches that but me. No, I don't watch that one. Uh, Trophy Wife? No, probably not. Uh, The Neighbors was canceled. Uh, let's see. What did what get canceled? The following? The Trophy Wife. Trophy Trophy Wife Wife did. And Trophy Wife is one of those shows that we were talking about, Steve, that I'm actually mad was canceled. <laughs> uh, because I actually thought it was a very funny, uh, charming, kind of heartfelt comedy uh, that was just kind of buried under a bad name. Um, the Neighbors was also canceled after its second season, which I really liked The Neighbors. I brought it up in the comments section. I kind of always thought it was the other side of Men in Black that you don't see in the movies. And watching the ser- the se- the series through that lens uh, actually ha- ma- helped me enjoy it more. Um, let's see, I'm going through my list of TV shows to see what's ended and what I've actually watched. I have not seen the series season finale to Supernatural. I have. Um, it's a the- doozy. <laughs> the series finale for Supergatory was sad as well. I'm mad that that show is canceled. Um, Sleepy Hollow was all right. Uh, looking forward to. I'm not. I can't say I'm looking forward to season two, but I, I do want to see where they go with it. Um, I did catch the end of Person of Interest, which I think is one of my favorite TV shows uh, right now. Um, I'm excited to see where that goes. Man, okay. Why don't we just talk about the shows that you guys have watched because. Well, I think both of us have watched The Big Bang Theory Season 7 finale. Yep. And people that say, oh, The Big Bang Theory, that's just a bunch of crappy jokes and whatever else, and there's no character development. They've been developing these characters. They've been adding new characters over the last seven years. And this year's season finale, I was really surprised that they took the characters and finally really gave them a new direction. Um, You don't care about spoilers, do you, Mike? No. Or have you seen it? Okay. Nope. Leonard and Penny are getting married. (laughs) They're actually engaged. They are actually engaged. Uh, Stuart's comic book store burned down, so because of his personality, he is the only person that Howard and Bernadette find that actually wants to take care of Howard's ailing mother. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, 
Sheldon... <laughs> has a nervous breakdown. Basically has a nervous breakdown throughout the whole episode because he cannot handle change at all. I can handle change for the most part, but there are certain times where I'm kind of like that, where I just cannot stand change. Um, but I'm nowhere near as against change as Sheldon is. And he um, basically has a nervous breakdown because of Leonard and Penny's engagement. And they're, they actually suggest that they live, uh, that Leonard and Penny live in the main apartment and Sheldon move over to Penny's apartment. <laughs> and that freaks him out. By the end of the episode, Sheldon goes off on his own on some journey on a train. And the rest of the gang just hangs out. Uh, Raj finally gets laid more than once. <laughs> um, I really, I, I love the season finale th- this year. I thought it was great. Um, I love that they're taking the characters in completely new directions. Um, you know, you look at Howard Wolowitz from season one to season seven. The dude's character has really evolved in that time. He's not the perv he was in season one. He can still be that way, but it's not as apparent anymore. Uh, what were your thoughts on season seven finale, Steve? Um, I I kind of expected some of these things to happen. The whole uh, some of the personality swaps and some of the changes in scenery I think should have been done a while ago, but Mm-hmm. Um, like they've been building towards the Penny and, and Leonard thing for a while, but uh, the Sheldon thing needed to be switched up a while back. The um, the comic shop that needed to be switched up a while ago. Um, so it, it it bodes well for the next season. I just hope that they don't keep dragging the show on too long. Um, like like they tend to do with a lot of shows anymore. They they it's like they have to hit that magic season ten number. Well it is renewed for three more years. It is renewed for three more years, so there is that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um overall it was a really good season finale. I I don't think Steve did, but I watched the season finale of Revenge. I have not been watching a lot of season three of Revenge. It just kind of it, it lost interest, I think, six episodes into season three. And by the end of it, um, I was like, hmm, well, there you go. That's interesting. Did you catch that at all, Mike, or did you give that show up? I gave it up. You gave it up? Yep. Basically, David Clark gets cleared, and guess what? David Clark's alive. And by the end of the episode, uh, Colin, or not not Colin, what the hell's his name? Um, oh, crap. Stowe's husband. Um, crap. Grayson. Uh, Grayson Sr. He gets shot, and ki- supposedly shot and killed by, by David Clark. Uh, I watched that. I thought that was interesting. Um, <laughs> since we were talking about TV, Mike, I guess we could jump over to NBC and talk about that sadly anticlimactic season finale for The Blacklist. It, I mean, I... I mean, yeah, it wasn't very climactic. It was interesting to see Red get his hands dirty. Mm-hmm. I think that was the high point of the, of the show. But, mm-hmm. it, you know... Uh, like I talked about on last week's episode, I, I still don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But you know, it's like the I said, did did it happen? I, I was so excited when when you know a certain <laughs> event happened, and then I you know get to the end of the episode, and it dawned on me. It's like, wait a minute, did it happen, or didn't it? Yeah, yeah and I was like, oh come on, just be done with it already. I mean, I like that character a little bit more now that I know he's not what he was at the beginning of the season. Um, The Blacklist overall for me has, in the beginning, it was a really awesome, fun ride. And, like, I think up until the point of the, like, after the Ansel Garrick two-parter, I couldn't say, up until then, I couldn't say a bad thing about the show. I loved it so much. As they kept going through it until the final two episodes... I there were certain times where I got really bored with it, which is really funny because I love the show to that point. 
And I honestly think NBC needs to adopt the 13 episode, you know, arc thing instead of 22. 22 is just way too long and drawn out. Yeah. Um, uh, the season finale for me, it's like, hey, Mira died. She got shot or she got stabbed or like didn't mean anything. No one really had like really had any emotion to her. I've been a proponent of of Lizzie Keen since day one, but even in the finale, I was like, "Why do I care about this character?" I, I want to know why. I feel like I don't know why they keep treating the audience like they're dumb. Mm-hmm. In the fact that they keep go, you know, Red keeps insisting he's not her dad. Here's my thing with that, really quickly. The only thing, that's the only thing that makes any damn sense, because his interest in her otherwise is stalker-like and creepy. Yes, and I, and it's just, I, I wish they would just get it out of the way and be done with that part, because that is just, I don't know, they, it makes me, and here's the thing, it makes me feel stupid, because every shred of writing and acting suggests that he has some sort of like family or fatherly like vibe towards her and if the writers turn around and concoct some other ham-fisted reason like that he's not like he he, they make it so he is not in fact her actual father and that it's Mm -hmm. some other person that we've never seen or seen or heard of and Red was just like, maybe Red was like a friend and he was like caught in the fire. If that ends up being the case, I'm done with this show. Because that's <laughs> just them being like, he's not, it's not, it, it's really not. We just, we just, we just don't know how yet. He's just not. Yeah. And then they'll just make it not when all their writing and acting says it is. And I, I, I'll feel like they'll just be like, it's just be like, see, look how dumb you are thinking that it was his dad the whole time. No. <laughs> I think that might be where I throw in the towel. The minute that they say, this is your actual father, I think, and it's not red, I might throw in the towel. Yeah. Now, there is one thing that I will point out. Um, every so often, usually every week, sometimes they don't do it, which kind of makes me mad when they don't do it. But on the Blacklist YouTube channel, they have uh, Beyond the Blacklist and it, it's a digital exclusive that comes out after every episode, usually the next day. Um, there's short videos, maybe five or ten minutes, with the crew and the cast. And they talk about the episode that happened that week. And the funny thing is, when I hear them talking about it, you know, even though at the time of watching an episode of the show, I might have problems with that episode. Once I hear them talking about it, they're like, oh, okay, I, I can fully get behind that now. <laughs> but isn't it, um, doesn't it kind of make it a little silly that they have to have something to justify why something is... No, well... No, instead of yeah. having it just being good and well-written in the show, there has to be yeah. supplemental material to make it flow better. I mean, I like the supplemental material for the show because I think it's interesting to see what the, like, more specifically the cast, like Megan Boone or, or James Spader or even, um, uh, what's his name, Harry, Harry Lennox, um, what they have to say about their characters. I, I, that's one of the reasons why I like it. But after I watched the season finale and, I, and then I watched the 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 kind of recap and, and final thoughts on it, uh, I'm still not happy. With the season finale, I mean, I'm happy and I'm not happy. They leave things so it's not a true cliffhanger at all, but they do leave things open to to interpretation and question. Like you were saying earlier, just give us a damn definitive answer. And the stupid thing is, in the mid season, they even said she directly asks him, "Are you my father?" And he says, "No." What's his motivation for like? Is it because if he reveals to her that he's her father, that her whole character is going to change because of that knowledge. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I'm really interested to see where the blacklist goes for season two. Um, uh, I'm kind of upset that we didn't really get like a big, you know, end all be all blacklister 
at this first season. I mean, I, I guess Berlin being number eight, it's the highest number we got. And I do like the fact that, you know, when she figures it out that, hey, all of these, you know, people are connected in some way to this this mystery guy that no one really knows about. I'm wondering if the mystery guy is her father. That's what I'm wondering. Ham-fisted. <laughs> um, I did watch the season finale of The Americans. Um, season two of The Americans, I, I don't know if you've watched that or if, um, if you've been watching that show, Mike, I, at all. I have the entire season. I'm... I... It's one that's been on the back burner. I was going to like blow through the whole thing in like a day or two. So So you have season 2 already? Yeah, I I've okay. I've only watched the first episode and that was obviously back in February. Uh, right. I have not watched any since. So uh, I was so tread stoked. Lightly. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I I I won't spoil anything. I I was so stoked the first season cuz and and I, and I will maintain this opinion. This is a show that could not have been done any time except for right now because of the content and the time period that it's that it's set in um season two for me my general thought is at least for me personally it was a little bit too much of a slow burn there wasn't a lot of action uh the finale sets up season three it doesn't direct it, it puts the show in a new direction that i'm very interested in but getting there was like trying to walk behind an elephant. Hmm. I mean, it's just it's just the way I felt watching the second season. I was expecting a little bit more action, but this year for the second season, they they basically focused a lot on the family stuff. That was kind of the whole plot behind Elizabeth and Philip and everything else with with them directly. Um, the FBI stuff bores me to tears uh the resident tourist stuff bores me to tears i really only care about philip and elizabeth and what's going on directly with them right now i i don't know it it was a very slow burn for me for season two a lot of our fx shows are like that though they're kind of slow burns with little little flare-ups here and there mm-hmm yeah. So, but I, I haven't seen it, so maybe I now I'm kind of dreading watching it. Well, no, no, no. I'm I'm just saying, for me personally, you you you, you might see it differently. Um, I would say still still watch it because um, you're going to be really interested. I think you might be really interested in where they're where they're going to go uh, for the next season because it was picked up, I believe. Yeah, it was. Um, what other season finales do we have to talk about, Steve? Well, I was wanting to talk about Supernatural, but since uh, <laughs> next week, Mike hasn't said yet. Um, or I can, what, or what, I can bow out, and you can talk about it. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, what I was going to say about it, without actually spoiling anything, uh, is it it becomes self aware and uh, in a piece of dialogue. And I'm not going to say anything about what it is or who said it or anything, but um, the dynamic that they pull every single season uh, where one of the Winchesters dies or comes back or dies or comes back or any of that kind of goofy yeah. stuff. Yeah. It pokes fun at itself because it's like, oh, this has become so repetitive. It's like they're so so uh, um, predictable, and then they totally like three sixty it, like or one eighty it, go in a completely different direction. Hmm. See, that's another and, show that I kind of put on the back burner. I have six. I have the last six episodes of that to watch. So it it's it's it kind of I don't know I. Some of these villains, because they become, you know, they're they're the whole season long villain type thing, uh, which they've done the entire time, and it's fine. I I have a hard time getting into it more the further it goes along because they keep playing the same card over and over, just with a you know the new the new bad guy villain of the the month. Um, but 
they have a lot go on in the the last episode. I'll just say that um, it, it definitely has a WTF moment at the end. Hmm. Um, and uh, that's how they drop it for the next season. And I know that it's been renewed for a tenth season, but I am hoping that there's a couple plot lines they left open in previous seasons that I could see coming into play in season 10 with what happens um, to completely wrap it up and end it. See, I think, I think supernatural was at its best. Uh, I'm trying to you up know, until I'll, season five. Well, okay. I was going to say, I think supernatural is at its best when it takes real world, like history or, or people and puts a supernatural slash, you know, demon hunter spin on it. Um, and I'm really calling back to like the early seasons with the cult and, you know, the, the devils, uh, was it the pentagram, the massive one that was built out of the railroads? Yep. Like yellow white demon. Yeah. Like, that that though that kind of history that stuff was like amazing like why i wish they would did they just like throw the gun away when they ran out of the six bullets cuz i feel like you well, could have made like half a season where it's like we need to figure out how to make more of these bullets well they did i don't remember that they, crowley gave them the gun back in season 5 to kill lucifer and they had to manufacture new bullets for it and find some of the original bullets and they wasted them because it didn't do anything to Lucifer. Uh, it, it weakened him, but it didn't actually hurt him. Oh. Um, so, and then it just became one of those MacGuffins that just disappeared. And then yeah. they, you know, they, they replaced it with, you know, the, the, the demon blade and then they replaced it with the the angel blade that kills both the angels and demons and then you know then the first blade I just wish there was more I wish there was more of that and I did like I do like the Cain and Abel vibe that's going on in, in the current season Granted, oh, I that comes to play heavily I, ha- I haven't seen how it comes to a head but I'm I'm enjoying that like right now the, the subtle little the twist on that and stuff that's about the only thing going on this season. And uh, season six and seven are terrible. <laughs> Eight's getting, be- you know, it was getting better. Nine's getting, you know, better as it goes. And then, um, but I think season one through five was so strong because of the, not only the writers, but because you had the actual show creator on board. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of his thing was touching on historical uh, items and, and information and that kind of stuff. So um, once he departed at season five, it kind of went down the crapper as far as that. And then and they just tried inventing random things and pulling stuff out of their ass. Isn't it season four that ends with Sam dying? Which one, which season doesn't end well, with him dying? Okay, there's one season where, and it's either four or five, I think it's four, but it's like where, where Sam dies kind of like, you know, in the in the third act of, this, of the thing, and Dean kind of moves on, he moves into a house, and the camera like kind of pulls out, it's showing Dean at like a kitchen table or something with whoever he's with, and after a certain amount of time's like passed, and the camera like pulls out, and then it pans to the right, and Sam is standing outside on the street. Season five, season finale. Yeah, that that, that right the there. Yeah, I feel like that was the last time it was actually good to me. And I feel I I was so pissed when the camera turned. And I mean, I watched it on Netflix when they were on like I think season seven is when I started actually watching it. So they were like marathon through like one through six, and. When it got to, and I, so I knew there was a sixth season. When, when it got to the end of season five, and my sister had told me that that's where it kind of gets a little shoddy. Um, it's kind of like that stinger of Sam standing there was kind of like something they threw on at the last second. Like, are they going to get renewed? Are they not going to get renewed? And I feel like when they were announced they were going to re, 
that they got renewed that that was like a scene that they shot where the camera just pans and like oh sam is there now you have to come back next season to see why sam is back and i just remember watching that i was so i was so mad i was like oh, are you kidding me Ugh. i mean they could, they could have just as easily brought him back in the sixth season rather than show him at the end of the fifth i mean i understand it's the hook but uh... it was just one of the things about that show is that's like the one moment i just that stands out in my mind that was just like this was such a perfect ending, and you had to go and ruin it. Good job. <laughs> they have a lot of cheap moments like that. Um, but I, I definitely think that they switched the dynamic this time around. Oh, Dean uh, dies? Well, I mean, they, they alternate every other season, if you, if you watch. I guess I've never really noticed. But because uh, season two... Or, or at the end of season one, the dad, Sam and Dean were all in the hospital, and then Dean dies in the first episode. And then the dad dies right after that because he trades his life for Dean's. <laughs> um, and the Crossroads demon that, or not Crossroads demon, the uh, the death demon that, um, or death angel that's supposed to take Dean to, to heaven or whatever in season two. Uh, I don't, it comes back in the season. Um, and then uh, you have, um, there's an element that happens in season two of something that happens with Dean's character that plays a part in the end of season nine. So okay. it's, it's, a, it's a lot of calling back to the, the good part of the show kind of foreshadowing and telling of later things to come. So it's it, it's rather inventive how they're they're pulling back and I'm like, oh I remember that person or I remember this this element. But uh and and I I was wanting to discuss uh an element of what happened in the episode, but I guess I'll wait till next week to talk about that briefly. Sorry. Um, because I've no it's fine. I've been reading uh theories by critics anyway about how they see season 10 playing out hmm. but yeah definitely I, I would say it's one of the stronger season finales uh, I don't know if I'd go as good as Once Upon a Time but I would probably put it just below that I think Once Upon a Time thinking about it I think Once Upon a Time was as good as it was just because of how it ended. But I, I'm not saying that. I don't think it's because of who was at the end of, you know, that. I think I think you could have put almost any, you know, Disney character in that spot. And it would have been just as big of a hook. I mean, yeah, I guess because it was, I guess because it was that character it was like slightly more of a hook, but... I feel like any kind, any time you end a season finale revealing what may or may not be your next baddie, I think that's gonna that's a pretty big that's a pretty big hook or a bomb to drop, you know, right before the credits roll. That'll get people to tune back in. Yeah. So once upon a time is letting it go, right? Hmm. Once upon a time is letting it go, right? Since Frozen's coming in season three, I guess it's he's making a pun on the song. Oh, I didn't really pay attention to that movie. I couldn't stand it. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I didn't mind the film, but there was having so, heard I... that that song, that damn song, <laughs> on not only Disney Channel but on Cars One Away constantly. It's annoying. I don't know, I just, there were so many times, I couldn't follow the, I'll probably catch heat from this from Dan or somebody, but the story made, like, no sense to me, is, I guess as an an adult, I was looking for the story to flow coherently, or at least resemble somewhat reality, and it didn't, like, but I'm not a big Disney guy, like, the last, I don't really care for Disney movies, I think the last Disney movie I actually liked, I mean, 
I like Wreck-It Ralph. That's kind of like the new age stuff. And I did like Tangled, but classic Disney, which is what Frozen pretends to be or, you know, is hearkening back to not really my cup of tea. Um, I think that I like, you know, I like Lion King. I like Aladdin. I like uh, Little Mermaid. But after that, like not so much. Um, and I remember the last, I think the last actual Disney movie I saw in theaters was probably Lilo and Stitch. I think that's one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm right there with you. I, you know, I, my problem with some of the Disney stuff nowadays with the with the animated films is that they get such followings, and that's fine. Follow what you want to like. You know, I'm not telling anybody to not like something or to like something, but my problem is because of the internet and we're always on the internet, we get exposed to this stuff or overexposed. And this is one thing. If everyone's talking about something, I stop and go the other way and wait to discover it on my own instead of just following the crowd. Um, I waited until it was at Redbox and I waited until Redbox sent me a free code. Um, I sat and watched it and I think I watched half of it, stopped it, had to go do stuff and and came back and finished watching it. It's not the masterpiece everyone says it is. It's not the best thing ever. It's an okay Disney movie. Um, it's better than Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but it just wasn't my wasn't my cup of tea at all. So, yes. I think that rounds out the the TV season finales. Yep. Um, do we want to or care to talk about the Dawn of Justice? Uh, can we have the Dusk of Justice and just be over with it already? Can't the movie just be here already? I really don't get the title. I don't have a lot to say about it, but I really don't get it. I don't understand why it's not just Batman versus Superman or even Batman v Superman. I don't it's oh, cuz here's the thing anytime you've seen a franchise that does the subtitle thing and they're not supposed to and i guess i can't really no i can there's two out there that are kind of like a thing right now right there's twilight like they were supposed to be named after the books but it's now it's like the first one is called twilight the rest of them are twilight saga eclipse or twilight saga like new moon and then there's um, the Hunger Games. So the first one is called the Hunger Games, and the next one is called like Hunger Games, and then like Mockingjay or whatever it's supposed to be. Like they all carry the the title of the first one, so that people can identify it that it's part of uh, a series. So if the next movie is supposed to be Justice League, is it going to be Batman v Superman Justice League? Like I just feel like that's such a bad just from a marketing standpoint. Yeah. But I guess, I guess they just think if you put Batman in front of it, then, or, you know, you, you, you call it whatever you want. As long as the trailer has Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman in it, people are going to go see it. And maybe that's where Warner brothers is going. And if that's where they're going, then I'm kind of give them credit for that because I've been waiting for someone to do that for a long time. Like, I don't understand why, and I guess Lord of the Rings did it, because the first one's called Lord of the Rings, the second one is called Two Towers, it's not Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, or no, yeah it is, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, so that's another one, like, but they, and, if they have the, the, the balls to just call the second movie Justice League, then without putting, you know, Batman v Superman to let people know that it's in continuity or something like that, then that's great. And maybe the other thing I kind of took away from the title was it kind of sounds like um, that one theory that I put forward, Steve, uh, from that comment I read on the internet where maybe each one is kind of a one-off movie with limited continuity between them other than the actors playing the characters. Where they're just going to tell oh. the big event stories instead of having like these these smaller movies like Marvel does. They're just going to have the big Avengers style movies, um, which would be, which the the title kind of, to me the the title kind of says that. 
in my opinion, but um, I don't. At least there's a title. There wasn't a title like three days ago, so yeah. that's a, that's that's a plus. I mean, we saw the bat suit in the in the Batmobile before we even knew the name of the freaking movie, and we still don't even have a release date yet. So I don't know. Let's just shoot towards a moving target, I guess. I still haven't seen any... There isn't anything that I dislike about the movie other than the way... I can't really... Is it, I dislike the marketing of it. That's that's what it is. But could it be the, called... Is, is a press release really marketing? I don't know that there's... Cause, it's an announcement. But Yeah, but I marketing mean. to me is like ads and or like a trailer spot. I don't know that there's actually been marketing. I think they're just been like PR releases and the way we just had this thing about we just brought it up talking about frozen where it, the internet is just so saturated with this stuff and the, and the news comes at you constantly. Like, I think that's just what it is because it's not, it's not marketing. Cause it's not, they haven't really shown, they showed a picture of what a movie poster may look like, but who knows if that's actually going to be the first movie poster because the movie posters haven't hit yet. So there's no marketing there. There's no trailer for it. So that's, I think as soon as like a trailer comes out, which I still swear there should have been one on Godzilla. But even if it's just like, I, I could have, I would have like, I was thinking about it because I was reading the comment about the, you know, getting the trailer just to hear like Ben Affleck as Batman. Like mm-hmm. you could have done that same thing where we talked about the first Dark Knight trailer where you heard the Joker's laugh. Mm-hmm. It would have been great just to hear some kind of monologue by Henry Cavill as Superman and then just Ben Affleck right at the end of it just go, I'm Batman. Like, <laughs> or, or you know what would have been the best teaser ever for this movie? And before I reveal what I think my thought is here, um, here's the thing: this when was this movie? And which Comic Con? What com- was it? 2012, 2013, 2013 Comic Con. 2013. Okay, 2013. Supposedly it's not coming out till 2016, 2017. It's 2015. Okay. Well, it. I thought it was moved back to 2016. Oh, it is 2016. Anyway. 2013 to 2016 that's three years and all this news as you put it is is here and now and everything else and we see the bat suit we see the batmobile we finally get a title the best teaser that they could have done for this movie because they are marketing it as batman versus superman so i assume they're going to fight at some point during this film best teaser whether it's danny elfman you bring him back God, or no. whether you no wait Anyways. Wait, wait, wait. If you bring back Danny Elfman or you continue on with Hans Zimmer for the music, just have some big fight music and see the two of them coming at each other. Like, you know, like they're going to punch each other. Like like Superman's going to fly out and punch back. Just have them coming at each other like, you know, round one fight. You know, even that would have been better than not getting anything at all. In my because... head, that sounds so laughable because I just imagine that when they get ready to punch each other in the face, Superman just flicks Batman. <laughs> That's how that scene ends to me. Not with a not with a splash of the title and the logo. No, it ends with Superman flicking Batman in the face and killing him. Oh God! Uh, well, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, now that you say that, my question is: We've seen how powerful Superman is in Man of Steel. Do you think because of the fact that they're bringing in Batman, who is just an ordinary human being with extraordinary gadgets, do you think they're going to decrease Superman's power at all? Because I, there have been plenty of memes and jokes on the internet recently where, uh, actually there was one I shared the other day on Facebook, where uh, Batman, uh, Batman uh, smacks Superman like he would smack Robin, and the second part of the image is his hand broken. <laughs> Oh, bloody. So my question is, do you guys think that they're going to reduce Superman's powers in this new movie because it's Batman? Or how, that would, how do we think? That would be the worst possible thing they could do, in my opinion. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm my favorite thing. Sure what... Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say I'm not quite sure what to think about the the whole... Deep power. Justice yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> my my favorite thing I had a there's a the the thing from Kevin Smith going around the suit is actually blue and gray. 
And yeah. I, my friend brought it up on Facebook, and I said, yeah, but with the color time, it's still going to look black and gray. Because if you look at the way Man of Steel was shot and the way they desaturated everything, they the behind-the-scenes footage for Man of Steel, his suit is actually Superman blue and red. But in the movie, it doesn't look that way at all like it's a really really dark blue and like a blood red and that's not how it looks in real life like if you're standing next to henry cavill in the suit that's not how it looks so if it's blue and gray it's still gonna look black and gray on screen it's just (laughs) it's gonna be really bad i don't know i you know like i said three years of building this thing up it just that's too much in their defense i saw I they had Tumblr photos in I want to say 2003 for the 2005 Batman Begins. There were Tumblr photos out there, like full on Tumblr photos, not not like here's something taken from my like a camera. <laughs> yeah. No, like like you know the Tumblr like in the woods on the path to the Batcave, like full on all lit up and everything. Uh I and I believe it was two thousand three. Um like fall two thousand three they went up because I know it was right before Catwoman uh was show like they were gonna show off Catwoman and stuff like that. But uh and I mean Halle Berry's Catwoman, not not I'm not mixing up my movies here. But yeah the so it's it ha- really it's just it's just because the way that the internet is and how fast information moves um that's that's the only reason why it seems so out of place it's not i don't really think it's any different from anything else i mean star wars is just as bad right now i mean any little piece of star wars news that gets dropped gets shot around the shot around and that's not coming out until the end of next year i mean that's still and that stuff was announced uh at the same time as um like the Man of Steel stuff was. Right, but it just seems like with... I think the Batman stuff is more in your face because you're looking for that. Like, that is... Uh, you ex- Honestly, I'm not. But you <laughs> but you exist... All your, You exist in that... Like, Batman, DC, that's, like, your thing. So mm-hmm. all that news is, like, in your face. Whether you want to see it or not. I mean, you might, you might not actively seek it out, but it's probably going to pop up in your Twitter feed by the simple fact that you probably follow people that like Batman or like DC stuff. It's going to show up in your Twitter stream. So it's going to get bombarded by that stuff. Whereas mine, I kind of get like an, I kind of get like an even keel kind of thing. I see like the same amount of information for like everything because I don't really lean towards one thing or the other. I'm just saying like maybe you're bombarded by all the Batman news because when they show off like the suit, maybe your Twitter feed lights up with like sixty different retweets of the same article from like twenty different sites, like all running with the same thing. And where I see it from like two. Yeah, well, I mostly get the news from Facebook now. I very rarely use Twitter for news. Well, same um, difference. I mean, Facebook. Right, too. right. Well, I know, but kind of not necessarily transitioning but one one of my problems with facebook and news is sometimes certain uh pages like for example not not saying they're they're a bad page or a bad website but for example say newsarama has done this a couple of times they will post an article at seven o'clock in the morning and then i guess because in case people missed it they'll post the exact same article as if it was brand new I, on Twitter, that happens, but they put the "in case you missed it" tag in front of it. They don't do that on Facebook. <laughs> mm. What else are we going to talk about this week? I'm about tapped um, out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's about it. We've kind of attacked all fronts this week. Um, Maybe next week we'll talk briefly about the Supernatural finale and have something else. Why don't you guys suggest something that we talk about? Because I'm sure we've talked House and uh, finale uh, up the wazoo at this point. (laughs) So, 
Anything else before we close it out? Oh, I was right about the Guardians of the Galaxy. I just want to say that. What about it? The second trailer is not as good as the first one. <laughs> Isn't that how it always works? Well, I just i i had the i've i've been you know saying that the first Guardians trailer, in my opinion, and in you know the opinion of some of my closer friends, it is probably one of the most perfect trailers that we've ever seen. It doesn't give away too much about the movie. It sets up the tone really well. It's funny. It it does a lot of things in two minutes and 30 seconds. And every time that I've watched that trailer, like on my phone, on my TV, you know, every time I go and watch a movie at the movie theater, the trailer's on there, I get the biggest shit grin on my face watching that trailer. And I've said that the minute they release another trailer or they start releasing TV spots for this movie, it's going to start eroding the goodwill that this trailer, that this one perfect trailer has built up for this movie. And don't get me wrong. The new guardians of the galaxy trailer, just like the first one, awesome choice in music, awesome choice, but it doesn't, do anything that the first one didn't do it's kind of like and a lot of yeah a lot of trailers do this it's the same tra- it's almost the same trailer as the first but with a little more added to this scene or or you know that a different take on another one it's just not it, it it's doing exactly what i thought it this one makes me kind of want to see it a little less than the first one did um and not because of like they show Ra- rocket talking or you know groot you know saying his uh, you know, his one line of choice or anything like that. But I just thought that the first one was so good that there was no way that any other trailer for this movie could, you know, could best that. So I just want to say I was right. At least in my opinion, I was right. So I'm still going to see the movie because I think it looks great. But the second trailer is not what makes me think the movie looks great. That credit still goes to the first trailer. All right, I'm done. Already? <laughs> Soapbox ended. Um, One thing, since I just looked up who is voicing Rocket, Face Man is Rocket, really? Bradley Cooper? You can't even tell. <laughs> At least I, I mean, I knew going, I knew that he was voicing Rocket, and mm-hmm. this is the first time I think uh, anyone's actually heard him speak. And if I didn't know it was Bradley Cooper, I wouldn't know it was Bradley Cooper. Mm, okay at least you know in the trailer he only talks for a few quick snippets i'm sure like once you get in the movie and you sit down and you hear him talk for like longer periods of time yeah you might know it's bradley cooper but at least in the trailer it's kind of hard to tell that it's him and of course you know vin diesel's doing his best to play the iron giant again (laughs) they still need to do a sequel of that movie they really don't no they don't they just need to release it on Blu-ray. <laughs> so, all right, that's so, it. I'm good. Alrighty. So, thank you as always for joining us here on Altered Geek Unlimited. You can contact us in the following ways. You can call the voicemail line 502-526-5821. You can email us feedback at geekcastradio.com. You can visit the episode post on the website. You can find us on Facebook by searching GeekCast Radio Network. You can get a hold of us on the the Twitters by typing at GeekCast Radio, hashtag Altered Geek. My Twitter handle is at SCP21, and yours are sirs? At BoothNinja81. TFT on Mike. So, as always, get Altered Geek Geeky with the Altered Geeks. See you next time. Bye.